Okay. So basically today in the first uh, one hour and a half we will uh, do some exercises okay, on what we have seen yesterday. So arrays and strings. So you remember the arrays, uh, you have the slides for arrays, strings and so on. And we will see something in practice uh, now. Okay. So um, and then in a second, uh, one, one hour and a half after the break, we will talk about uh, uh, something more advanced like uh, functions, objects, and so on. Okay, the slides that you already have on the, um, on the uh, website. So, how do we proceed? Uh, well, um, I understand that uh, you may be... Uh, would like to use this Python tutor. You remember yesterday we, we saw this Python tutor, which is very convenient, uh, you know, to show graphically what is happening in your program. That's an option for a very simple example. It's fine. Uh, but we will also see, uh, start to see what we can do with a more serious programming environment, that is the Visual Studio Code that we have seen, um, uh, we, we have pointed out yesterday. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Uh, we go to the uh, course website and we look for the um, uh, examples and lectures. Okay, and as I showed you yesterday for week number one, that is this week, we already have a few exercises to develop. Okay. So, yeah, I know this room is not the best one as well for, for, for programming, but again, it's just for today. Okay, because we need to do something uh, um, about JavaScript so that in the next lab, you're not just installing uh, Visual Studio Code and that's all. Okay, you can program a little bit. Okay, so we'll focus on the first two exercises, which are basically... Uh, aimed to handling arrays and strings in JavaScript. They are very simple exercises. I don't expect you have problems in designing, you know, the, the flow of the program that, that solves uh, the, 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 what is required. I mean, uh, create a new array, uh, remove uh, some scores, some, some, value, some elements in the array and so on. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff uh, that anybody that is able to program can, can do. Okay, the point is trying to do it in JavaScript and understanding what's happening in your program. Okay, so first exercise, uh, well, develop a small JavaScript program to manage the scores given to your user. I mean, in a question and answer website, well, this is, doesn't really, um, is not really important. I mean, we have a, a number of scores, a, a, a list of numbers, in short, uh, which are integer numbers, they might be negative, and uh, we should, first of all, put them into an array. Um, at the moment, uh, we don't read it from the keyboard, uh, we just put it into the source code, okay? So we define an array and we create an array as we did yesterday in a few examples. Uh, ignore all the rest which is related you know to an example that we will carry on during the next lectures uh, during the whole course okay so you will have a, a, an example I mean a, a, a website that we will you will develop during your labs and we in the sense in the in the lectures we will have another one that I will carry on during the next uh, weeks you know developing a small website Okay, so it's everything is connected, but I mean, for the first first exercise, this is not really important. We we just handling, we are just handling a few arrays, okay, some arrays and uh, strings. So uh, basically, define the array, duplicate the array, okay, but eliminate some scores, some uh, some elements in the array. So all the negative ones. Let's call uh, this the number of negative scores and n and um, also eliminate the two lowest ranking scores so the lower two ones and add n n plus two new scores so replace what you have 
thrown out of the array. At the end of the array, with the value equal to the rounded average of the ZXC scores. Print both the arrays uh, uh, and so on. Okay, so it's just, you know, uh, a few things to do to experiment with the arrays. Um, so, uh, I would try to work in, in Visual Studio, okay? So, in Visual Studio Code, so you also have a recording which you, to which you can refer uh, when you you are starting working with Visual Studio Code, we are, we were we will be doing everything uh, step by step. Okay, so of course you should have installed this Visual Studio Code, uh, yeah, um, framework, VS Code. Okay, we open it. I already prepared it. Uh, um, so actually, <laughs> this is already let's say, ready for, for working. But in any case, when, once you open it for the first time, uh, there will be a welcome message and so on. You can open folders, okay? Um, I open uh, the folder that I will then use, it, use to put uh, this example online on the website. So just, you know, choose a folder where you will be working for your exercises, okay? Create it if necessary, uh, and that's all. This will be opened uh, into the Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this is this AW Wix. Okay, there is a week number one exercises. This exercise which I already cloned from from the website. Okay, so I already downloaded uh, uh, the the text of the exercise from the website. Okay. Uh, Basically, Visual Studio Code is, uh, if you're not doing anything else, it, it's a file browser and a file editor, text editor, okay? Programs are just text. Uh, for some specific types of files, like these MD files, you have uh, uh, the possibility to have a nice preview, okay? MD is a format that helps you to, to write things uh, in text format, but in an ordered way, so you can define like uh, uh, you know, uh, titles and uh, lists, basically. And of course, then you can uh, write uh, JavaScript files or other program uh, uh, programs in other languages. Okay. So um, let's uh, let's start. Uh, we need to work in some folders. Uh, let's say um, uh, a. AW Wix is fine. We create a new file. So just create a new file. And uh, let's say, what's the name I, I gave it? Well, it doesn't really matter, but uh, let's say example, uh, well, exercise one, X one array. Okay, dot JS. Okay, oops. Uh, yes, dot JS. Okay, just uh, use a suitable extension. Why? I mean, it's just a text file, but if you call it .js, the programming environment uh, understand that it's a JavaScript file, so uh, it, it gives you uh, nice highlighting of the keywords, uh, of the syntax, and so on. Okay, that's the only reason why we call it JS. Okay. Um, and then you can start coding, okay? So this is a JavaScript file, we can start coding. Remember what I told you last time. First thing we do in a JavaScript file, always, always do this, use strict, okay? That's the first thing we want to write in the file. So tell the JavaScript interpreter to work in strict mode. Remember, strict mode um, um, yeah. well, uh, you can go and, and take the slides back and see what was the strict mode in the slides, you know. Disable dangerous, really dangerous and difficult to understand behaviors in JavaScript interpreter. Okay? Okay, that's fine. Then, 
let's define an array okay let's uh, put some some numbers okay so how do we define a, a variable you remember last time we said there are three ways of defining variable let const and var var we don't want to use it because it has a number of issues okay so there's let and const okay so if we think we don't need to change the content of the variable we can safely write const okay otherwise we use let really simple choice okay uh, at the moment I don't really know what we are going to do with this variable so probably we are not going to modify it we could also write const okay uh, let's see if it works or not okay as you would do in the lab I mean you start from scratch you try to to write something and let's see if if it works or not so we define a, an array you remember that we use the squared brackets uh, we put some numbers let me take uh, the example that we uh, have I mean it's not really important that we follow the the example but maybe uh, I can show you something more interesting if I follow it okay so um, exercise uh, scores okay uh, let's let's put some values inside okay minus 3 11 10 what we put it for minus 1 0 40 okay a, a few integer numbers okay actually they're integer numbers because we decided they should be integer numbers that's what the text says okay uh, scores are integer numbers but if you remember from yesterday JavaScript makes no difference between integers and floating point numbers so they are numbers for JavaScript that's fine okay of course we can always save uh, the file okay um, so let's try to do something with this uh, uh, array okay I invite you to program in this way uh, like in another in any other programming language that you are starting to learn write a small pieces of program and then test them okay so uh, you're not writing the whole program and then it's full of errors and you don't know you know what to what to do this with these errors because you are starting to learn this uh, this programming language okay so we do one thing uh, one very simple thing and we test it we do a, a we add another thing we test it and so on so it's easier to debug because if uh, it, it was working and then after we did a modification it doesn't work anymore so the, the error is in what we modified it's very simple okay this is true in any programming language so before you know uh, going on um, let's try to print this uh, uh, vector okay it's very simple you define something you print it and you see if it works so how do you print things um, it's not on the slides but you know we can uh, we can learn it uh, it's very simple it's like the print for in C print in, in Python and so on console dot log and basically you can put whatever you want inside here okay uh, you can of course put strings uh, but you can put also variable referring to more complex types uh, and these more complex types uh, arrays objects etc have a way to transform themselves into a string okay arrays will print the array okay so le let's try uh, as you can observe I'm always using this uh, you know uh, semicolon at the end I told you it's optional but let's try to not to complicate uh, things uh, in the beginning okay uh, personally I prefer using it because uh, the code is more clear you understand where the instruction finishes and where the new instruction starts <clears throat> so let's try to stick with simple things in the beginning okay 
Okay, so we wrote uh, our first JavaScript program. We can test it. How can we test it? We are outside the browser, so there's no JavaScript environment at the moment running here. It's just a, a text editor. Visual Studio Code is a text editor. Okay. So uh, we need to run an, um, a JavaScript environment that can run our code. Okay. And the JavaScript environment is this uh, Node.js that I told you about yesterday. Okay, how do we open it? Uh, the thing that I recommend to you is create a new terminal. Okay, a terminal is uh, um, uh, a place where you can issue command line instructions. Okay. And in particular, run programs just by writing the name of the program. Okay, if you install Node according to the instruction that I give you, uh, I gave you yesterday, there should be a Node command that basically maps to a program, the JavaScript environment that can, you can simply execute. Okay, so I did it correctly, so it works. Okay. But that's not the way we are going to use it at the moment. Okay, so I pressed Ctrl D to, to close it at the moment. Okay, uh, we're just saying node and please execute uh, the, uh, um, the file that we just saved. Okay, so the file is in week 01 and uh, it's called exercise one array. Okay. So let's press uh, uh, return and see what happens. Okay. So we define the array and we executed a, a console log. We ask it, we put the instruction console log. We executed the, the program and it prints the array. Okay. We are a bit lucky in the sense that console log works for arrays as well, not just for strings or simple um, um, so variables that contain simple types like numbers, etc. But uh, um, this is a, f a way to, to test your first program. Okay, let's say we did a mistake because it, it's a, it's really nice to see that uh, everything works, uh, but uh, when you are alone and you are testing in things by yourself. Uh, you know, something might happen. Okay. So let's say we forgot the, the brackets at the end. Okay. At the end of the uh, specification of the array. Let's see what happens. Well, you simply execute the same file. Of course, remember to save it. Some error comes out. Okay. So unexpected token, uh, semicolon at the end. Okay. And like in a, any other programming language, you need to review your code and try to understand what's what's wrong with your code. Okay, here it's very simple. We we created the, the error <laughs> on purpose. So, uh, of course, we we forgot uh, something. Okay. Um, so you just fix it. it you fix it, uh, and it works again. Uh, the nice thing of using a programming environment is that uh, very often it gives you some hints. You see that the semicolon has uh, uh, an, um, an, uh, is underlined with a red uh, color. It's not that big, but you can see it. Because uh, you know the uh, Visual Studio Code performs uh, a, 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 like a, a dynamic uh, syntax checking while we are writing. So after a while, if you're, if you're not writing anything, it, it tries to check if the syntax is correct. And if there's something wrong, uh, it uh, points out what uh, the, the, the program thinks, it, 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 what the Visual Studio Code thinks it's wrong. It's wrong. Okay. Uh, just be careful not to trust these uh, systems too much. Okay. I know they are becoming fancier and fancier with uh, artificial intelligence or whatever inside. I don't know. But, you know, sometimes they might be wrong. Okay. So the definitive answer is only when you execute the program and the execution environment says there's something wrong. Okay. 
it's true that you know for very simple issues like this you know uh, <laughs> the, the the environment is uh, the, the the visual studio code is correct so it's just a syntax error i mean we fix it uh, and it's fine okay don't forget to save it okay when you see this uh, dot uh, it's because you didn't save it yet so uh, let's save it i often do it with the shortcut keyboard shortcut but I want to show it in the recording as well sometimes. So we are back at the <laughs> at the beginning where we have defined this uh, vector. Okay. So first thing that we were asked to do: define the array. Okay, it's embedded in the source code. Uh, ignore the rest. Well, then duplicate the array. Okay, duplicate the array means make another copy of the array. You remember yesterday we say there's a difference between duplicating the reference to the array. So we can simply write, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, uh, const uh, v2 equal v. Okay, that's du duplicating the reference. Okay. But if we want to duplicate the array, what can we do? Uh, you remember that? Hope I hope you remember that. Uh, we've seen different ways of doing this activity. So uh, arrays. Uh, yes, array of. If you have parameters, different parameters, uh, one for each element. There's uh, array from, okay? And you just pass the reference to the array, and it it gives you a new reference to a new array, which is copied from the one that you passed. But also, you remember the spread syntax, the three dots, okay? So the spread syntax is a very frequent idiom that is used in JavaScript. So let's try to do this kind of things now. Okay? Because it's always easy to find a function that does what we want. It's, let's say, the traditional ways of programming. Okay? Uh, like, uh, if you have it, like in C, you don't have something like this. You need to create a new array and uh, for and iterating on the array and so on. In more advanced uh, languages, maybe you have something like uh, array from, okay? And in JavaScript, JavaScript is full of this kind of idioms. So, so uh, we'll try to use them just to see how they work so when, when it's needed, okay? So let's do this and see if it works, okay? So three dots, they're just dots, one, two, three, okay? V. It's not this. It's like an other operator. It's like plus, minus, and so on. Three dots is another operator in JavaScript. Okay, so console log v2. Why I'm doing this? Because as I told you before, every time I do something new, I want to test it, especially in the beginning, because I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing or not. Okay, so I save it and I run it again. Node. Okay. So, luckily there's another vector, okay, that is equal to the previous one, okay? How can I know if this is the same reference or not? Well, actually, there's no simple way of doing this here, okay? I cannot simply print the, the value of the reference. It's hidden from the program. It's like in Java, it's like in Python, you cannot uh, simply print, uh, you know, the reference to the memory because the programmer is not expected to manipulate this reference explicitly. It's not like in C, you can print a pointer and see what's the value, okay? So, how do I know if it's the same reference or not? Either I test the code in the Python tutor, I can do that, I mean, just for now, just just once let's do it okay so this python tutor okay for javascript let's paste the code and see 
if it works or not. Okay, you see there are two different references pointed to the different vectors. If you are in doubt, especially in these first lectures, in the first weeks, just test uh, the relevant um, piece of program in the Python tutor. And it gives you a graphical representation and you understand what's happening. Okay? Okay. The other way uh, would be uh, run the program in the debugger inside the Visual Studio code, but maybe we leave it for, for <laughs> you know, um, uh, next, uh, next lectures. Okay, at a certain point I will show you the, 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 the debugger, but uh, let's try to complete the first exercise first. Okay, so we have duplicated the array, eliminate all negative scores. Okay, so um, how can we eliminate all negative scores? This is a programming exercise. I'm, I'm expecting that you come, come, come up with an idea. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's a vec, uh, yeah, uh, an array uh, with a variable number of elements. You need to find the ones uh, that are negative. Um, uh, so um, there, there are basically two options if you think in terms of what, what you can do by programming uh, you know a solution for a problem like this either I sort the array and I find where the uh, negative elements end okay so there's a point uh, at which uh, there are no more negative elements and there are only zero or positive elements or I iterate over the whole array I find all the negative values and I discard each one of them okay so we just need to choose one solution or the other okay I'll choose the first one because uh, so I, I show you how to use the sort function in in the um, in JavaScript okay uh, but it's up to you, okay? Um, <clears throat> I mean, also the first solution has uh, an advantage in, in the sense that uh, if you sort the array, you just need to modify the array once because you find where you need to cut the array, okay? So the, the zero point, let's say, where you transition from negative to positive, and you just work on the array once. But, I mean, you, you can do the other solution as well. It's not really important now okay so we have this copy and uh, how do we sort the array well uh, any language which is let's say good enough to be used <laughs> should have a sort function implemented somewhere okay what's the problem is that uh, I mean I, I'm not sure uh, we had uh, the, the explain the this sort function in the slides right uh oh, where are the slides here okay so i think uh well maybe it's mentioned yeah it's sort okay well at least we know the name is sort and not sorted or whatever <laughs> okay uh how do we know how to use it well uh, you go to the resources that i showed you showed you yesterday so my preferred one is the mozilla developer network mdn okay mozilla developer network and you write things like uh, array sort okay and let's see what they tell us okay have a look at the let's say manual page or, or instruction page of the functions that are available in the standard library okay of course I can just give you the solution here I mean but I would like to show you how to proceed when you are alone you have an idea you want to develop the things uh, thinking that uh, I mean in this uh, uh, programming environment there should be some ways of doing uh, what, what I am thinking so let's say I want to sort something there should be a sort okay okay Let's see, uh, it's this array 
where this prototype, which is a long story, but let's ignore it for the moment. There should be a sort, okay? The sort method of array instances uh, sorts the elements of an array in place, okay? In place means uh, that there's not a new array created by the sort function, but the, the array is modified and elements are moved around in the array and in the final array there will be sorted okay and then uh, what does the sort function return returns the reference to the same array now that is sorted so i mean but the reference uh, we already have the reference because we will pass i mean we will call the sort function on the array so the variable that represents the reference to the array is already available in our program Okay, the default sort order is ascending, uh, uh, built upon converting the elements into strings. Okay. Then comparing their sequences of UTF-16 code units values. Okay. Just be careful of this kind of thing. JavaScript is full of this, uh, let's say, strange things. You would think, uh, well, I, I give uh, JavaScript a... Uh, you know, an array of numbers, I call sort, of course it's source number. No, the, 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 um, the instructions, the, 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 the manual says uh, uh, it converts to strings and then sort it. Okay, so just be careful of these things. Okay, uh, I told you yesterday, it was designed in 10 days. And something still is still alive today. <laughs> they they cannot just uh, change the way sort function works because programs rely rely on on the way it works. And uh, if you change how standard uh, functions in the standard library works, uh, you break some programs. Okay, so you cannot change this uh, behavior. You need to adapt to these behaviors. Okay. Well, then there are more details. The time and space complexity of the sort cannot be guaranteed. Uh, it depends on the implementation, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Uh, there's also some advice sometimes. You know, to sort the elements in an array without mutating the original array, use two sorted. So this is a good advice in case you need to create a new array. So you don't have to copy the array and then sort it. Okay? You have a function to do all the, these kind of things together. Okay, so um, what we are missing here? Well, uh, does the sort function take a parameter or not? Well, um, you can run it without parameters because we said uh, before um, it is a default sort order, this uh, you know, conversion into strings and then uh, uh, ascending order. But it can also take a comparison function. If you know how the sort function works in most of the programming languages, like uh, you know C, um, Java, or Python, you typically pass a, a sort function. So, uh, I mean, a, a function that uh, is able to compare two elements and say which should come before and which should come after. Okay. So this uh, compare function should take two elements, uh, A and B, and tell um, which one should be first, okay? The function that defines the sort order, the return value should be a number. Not, note that this returns a number, not a Boolean, yes or no, okay? It's a number whose sign indicates the relative order of the two elements. Negative if A less than B, positive if A greater than B, and zero if they are equal. Okay, so there are three possible outcomes. Um, okay, so this is, I, I don't want you to become an expert of the sort function of JavaScript, just to uh, tell you that sometimes you really need to pay attention to the uh, instructions and manual pages and uh, uh, definitions of the functions uh, that you find in the in the standard library. Okay, uh, so 
uh, let's try to use it and see if it works or not. Okay, so, oops, the, okay, Visual Studio Code, again. So we have this V2 sort, okay. Let's see what happens, okay. So we can call this sort on the reference to the array, okay, because actually the array is a predefined object in JavaScript, so it exposes some, some methods. Among them, sort uh, is one of the methods. And let's see what happens. Okay, you see, minus 1, minus 12, minus 3, 0. Okay, this is not a numerical order. This is uh, what I told you before. Everything is converted into a string and then it's sorted. Okay, so first character is minus, so everything with minus comes first, okay? But then there's one, one, two, one, uh, and so on, then there's three, and so on, okay? So, if you don't read the manual carefully, you think, well, wh what, what's wrong with my program? I mean, I just call the sort function. <laughs> there are three instructions to define a data. I mean, how can I be wrong? You're not wrong. I mean, it's just that the sort works in this way. Okay, you need to be used to this kind of, uh, let's say, strange behaviors in JavaScript because the JavaScript will be full of this kind of situations. We'll try to point out the most, uh, you know, unusual ones so you don't. Uh, uh, let's say lose too much time on this these behaviors okay but um, you know sometimes you will encounter some some issues like this so what can you do well of course you can ask us in the labs but if you are not we are not there well you search the internet uh, and as anybody and maybe somebody has encountered your problem problem especially if it's a typical one like this and gives you an hint about uh, what you should do and why these things are happening okay so how can we fix our program okay so let's pass a function okay to the uh, sort a function that takes two arguments at the moment you need to trust me because we didn't uh, talk about functions yet okay so I write a function in the most compact way I can uh, but uh, in the second one hour and a half, we will talk about functions, so we'll un you will understand this syntax. So here we pass a function, and we don't need to define a function outside the sort. In JavaScript, you can define many things uh, in line, uh, more or less like uh, you, you, you know Python, so like the lambda function in Python, you can define uh, a function on the fly, let's say, so directly into an expression without writing function, etc. It takes uh, two arguments, A and B, and returns a value. And actually, our, our value should be a number. We have numbers, so let's say it returns A minus B, and it's fine. Okay, so this is a function that takes two arguments, A and B, make a subtraction, and return the result of the subtraction. Okay, and we give it uh, to uh, the sort function. Let's see if it works, okay? Again, so now the sorting order, the second array, is fine. Minus 12, minus 3, minus 1, 0, 4, 10, and so on. So it's numerically sorted, okay? Fine, okay. So, we sorted the array. Uh, one more thing. You remember this was const, okay? How was the sort function able to modify the content of a const variable? Actually, it's not the content of the const variable is the reference. So the reference didn't change. What changed was, uh, you know, was the content of the array. That has not been defined const. There's no way of defining const each one of the elements of the array. Okay? You just define const for variables that are 
either pr uh, primitive types, so strings, numbers, boolean, and null undefined, or references to objects. Objects can be arrays, functions, uh, and uh, user-defined objects. Okay? So, this way works because the reference remains the same. Okay? And it, there's no no indication of uh, issues or errors from the JavaScript execution environment, so it's fine. Okay. So, um, what should we do now? Uh, let's go on with the exercise. Uh, okay, go on. So. Um, after sorting the array, let's find the point at which we need to cut the array. You remember that we decided to uh, face this problem by, you know, sort the array and then uh, eliminate all the negative scores by cutting the array. First of all, we need to find where to cut the array. Okay? So, of course, we could write a function like a code like this. I mean, and we, we can do that. Uh, let's let's try to do it uh, for at least for one uh, once. Okay, like if we were in C, okay, or maybe in Python as well. Okay, uh, just to show you the many ways in which you can program, and then we'll try always to move towards the more JavaScript-like uh, way. Okay. Uh, so, um, let's say, let uh, i equal to 0, i minus uh, v2 length, i plus plus, okay? This looks uh, like c, okay? So, if uh, v2 of i uh, is greater or equal than 0, then break, okay? And so you find into, let's say if it works, console log i the position, okay? Let's see if it works. Probably not, okay? Why does it work? Yes, I put, yes, I put i. Ah, one, yeah, one, yeah, I mean, it doesn't work, the program doesn't work, that's fine, <laughs> okay, that's correct, but even if I write I, okay, it doesn't work, because I is not defined here, okay, the scope of I, you know, so the scope of the variable defined with let is the scope in which it is defined, and for the for, it's a for, the scope of the for, so if you uh, write something inside the, the 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 instruction executed by the for i is defined outside it is not so let's say we should move it outside but this is a uh, very simple stuff i mean uh, uh, it's like c okay you you should be able to do the same things in c okay and now it works it says three so uh, the the uh, item with index number three so it's a fourth item in the array is that correct yes it's zero it's fine okay okay so this is a very c like code okay just to show you that you can do different things okay um i i will show you another way of doing this exercise and then a third way which is the final one okay Let's say that we have a, a counter uh, i for the position, but we also learned the last time that we can iterate over an, an array in a different way with the for. So, for const, uh, um, well, v, we already used it, e. Uh, off, remember, off, not in, off v2, okay, if v e greater than zero, break, okay, uh, else, i++, 
Okay. So it's just another way of doing the same thing. Okay. So we have a, a counter i that we increment at each iteration in the for, and the for runs over all the elements of v2, which is the array. Okay. So e that is a variable that I decided to define here in the for. Every uh, time we loop in the for takes a new value in the array, okay, from the next position in the array. Not this is, this can be const as well, because it's, it, it's destroyed at the end of the loop, it's recreated at each time you loop into the for, okay? That's another way, fine. We don't like it because it's not, <laughs> It doesn't resemble what, what uh, you find in actual JavaScript code around. I mean, you, if you see uh, examples around uh, of people that can really program well in JavaScript, you don't find these kind of things, okay? Why? Because you try to exploit the, uh, well, first the library function as much as possible, but also, you know, JavaScript is very peculiar in the fact that uh, you know, functions uh, are objects that can be passed around in the program as much as you want. We already did it for the sort function. This is, was not so clear, but we will talk more about this in the next uh, one hour and a half. But uh, since you can easily pass around functions, you can uh, create a lot of uh, l um, functions in the JavaScript standard library that takes other functions that decide how the function behaves, like the find, okay? We need to find something, right? We need to find a position. Let's see if in the standard library for the array, uh, uh, there are some functions that allows us to find something in the array. Yes, that's find, find index, find last, etc. okay? We need to find an index. Let's see if this function works for us find index method returns the index of the first element in the, in an array that satisfies the provided testing function of course we wouldn't be able to write a find function if we cannot pass something that decides if we found something interesting for us or not okay and indeed this function requires a function as a parameter Okay, um, this will be more clear in, in the next one hour and a half. Anyway, um, let's try to use it. There are examples as well, I think. Yes, like uh, um, here, find index and we pass a function, a function that uh, do some computation on the element of the array and decide if we found something or not, okay? If you find something, we, uh, uh, we return true, okay? Either we return false and the find index goes on in the array. And when we return true, the find index will tell us the index of which the function that we passed has returned true, okay? So we need basically a function that says uh, what we have put uh, uh, into our code here. So this condition, e greater than or equal to zero, okay? So let's say const uh, i equal, okay? Um, v2 find index, uh, and we write a function again as before e uh, e greater than greater or equal than zero okay so that's a condition on the single element let's uh, call it element okay so it's easy. L, element of the array and the find index will iterate over the array for us so we don't have to write the for anymore so we can comment everything here, okay? 
and let's see if it works again we did a modification and we see if it works or not okay three again okay that's the more let's say javascript way of doing this uh, uh, this activity okay so finding the index in the array where we need to split uh, the array okay uh, we need to get used to this kind of uh, programming uh, style okay uh, i understand it's not so easy we are uh, at the second day of the course so I, i'm not expecting that you start writing code like this now okay but you'll see that uh, you know looking at the example of what we are doing in the class in the next weeks and so on you'll get used to this kind of programming way okay and at a certain point will be even uh, easier for you and also i would say it's even sometimes more readable because uh, it's more explicit find index search for an index that satisfies a condition the condition is the element is greater than greater or equal than zero okay of course you can understand this stuff also from from the code but here there are six lines of code and you need to interpret what's happening well there's a loop there's a loop on an array uh, there's a break so at a certain time it stops uh, and when it stops what's happening there's something inside the i variable it's a counter because there's plus plus and so on so you need all this kind of reasoning by uh, f to understand what's happening in this code while if you read this kind of code it's it should be much easier to understand okay there's a question right If all the ways of uh, all the values in the array are negative, uh, I don't know. We'll check on the manual page. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so return the index of the first element in the array that passes the test. Otherwise, minus one. Sorry, using the for the four. Oh, for the four? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably the code was uh, was not was not checking this condition. So it means. Uh, uh, you arrive at uh, the length of the array, which is not uh, an index uh, which is valid into the array, right? Because it's from zero to length minus one, and if you uh, if everything is uh, is uh, negative, i in the end it's the length of the array, right? But this is just uh, you know the way in which you write the code. I mean, we are not focusing on these uh, edge cases at the moment, <laughs> okay? Uh, but it's true that at, once you have a, a good solution, you should check that everything works in any condition. Okay, so uh, the observation of your colleague is correct. The, the code is, is not uh, behaving exactly the same in the case all elements are negative in the array. Okay, because, you know, the manual page says it returns minus one, while our code with the four returns uh, the length of the array. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, let's delete this uh, this code. <laughs> okay, so this value we say that this value we wanted to call it uh, um, nn. Okay, and then uh, we remove the two negative scores. Okay? Uh, they are all negative scores. And the two lowest ranking scores as well. Okay, so we need to perform these operations. Um, so nn. Okay, so nn just to be consistent with the text. Okay, how we modify an array? Well, again, <laughs> we search the internet, we search the manual, or we look for the slides, hopefully we gave you some hints, okay? So there's ways of adding and removing single elements. We will uh, use it uh, one later, like shift that removes elements, okay? To remove two elements. But then we s also, well, actually we just uh, showed, we didn't mention there are a number of uh, methods on the array. Uh, this splice is very useful and very used uh, around in, in the code, handling arrays, 
because it removes elements from an array and optionally replace them in place. So modify the array. Okay. So it's very flexible depending on the parameters you pass. So you pass the array, uh, uh, sorry, the, the index. You call it on the array. You pass the index at which you want the function to work and then how many elements you want to remove and then optionally the elements that you want to insert in, 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 uh, uh, instead of the, the elements uh, that you removed, okay, in the place where you remove the elements. So let's try to use this splice and see if we can do it correctly. So V2, oops, no, yeah, V2, splice, okay. You see how useful is uh, the Visual Studio Code? Because, you know, if it recognizes things, it helps us as well. Because uh, uh, it reminds us uh, which are the parameters of the method, uh, what do they do, and so on. Okay, so very useful to be uh, to to use it. So uh, the location in the array from which you want to start removing elements. Actually, that's the beginning, and we want to start n n. We want to remove n n elements. So the beginning is zero, position zero, and we want to remove n n elements. Okay, and the rest of the parameters are optional. Okay. Well, actually, nn was optional as well. You see? Anyway, let's see if it works. So, console log nn, let's move the console log v2, that now we know that sort works. And let's try if this stuff works. So, the position is 3. And so, you know, yeah, well, was useful to have the sorted array before. Let's put it back. Okay. So this is the sorted array. We remove three elements. So the remaining one are 0, 4, 10, 14, and 18. Okay. So the splice works uh, as we expect. That's fine. Okay. It's true that we should still check, you know, if it works in any corner cases, uh, like uh, everything is negative and so on. But But let's start to work in a simple case and then maybe later we can try to fix uh, these uh, problems that might arise. Okay, and then remove, uh, the text was saying, oops, removing uh, the um, two lowest ranking scores. That's really nice because we sorted the array. Otherwise we should search again <laughs> for the lowest ranking scores in the array. Okay. So, actually, an advice, but this is a general advice. Maybe it's better to read the whole text and think about, uh, you know, how to solve the whole text before implementing a solution, because now we understand that probably sorting before doing the things was the easiest uh, uh, path to follow to sort, to, to solve the, the exercise, okay? Um, so, uh, eliminate the two lowest ranking scores and then add n n plus two new scores with a value equal to the rounded average of the existing scores. Okay, so remove. So we uh, we saw unshift. No shift. Sorry, shift. Okay, we remove two. I mean, we just put two instruction. If we want to remove n, of course you need to do a, a four and with a counter and so on. So. Yeah. That, that's that's uh, no other solution, I think. And then we need the average because we want to uh, we want to add, you know, this average and add n n plus two scores at the end of the array. Okay, just to make some exercise, uh, some some practice. Okay, so how do we compute an average? Uh, there there are more JavaScript <laughs> like. Uh, ways okay but we don't have the elements now to 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 do it in more javascript fashion let's do it in a traditional way okay how do you do it in normal programming language like c i mean you have a, a, a an accumulator you sum all the values you divide it by the number of the values and you get the average nothing really special so let's let's try to do that let's 
let average zero. This is average, but I mean, this could be accumulator and then we divided it. But uh, since we, we put it, the results again in average, let's call it average. So for uh, the const uh, value, okay, element value, e, whatever you want, of v2, okay? So this iterates over the array, the JavaScript way. <laughs> Um, average, uh, I mean, we accumulate the value, so plus one, plus equal uh, uh, val, okay? We don't have an index, we cannot write v2 square bracket something, because the index is not uh, explicit here, we just have the value, but that's what we need. And then at the end, uh, the four, average equal to average divided by the number of elements in v2 so v2 length right length okay that's the average console log average let's see what comes out let's test the program 14 well it's already rounded <laughs> so it's not so nice let's say 16 okay just modify the numbers uh, for one moment okay so uh, it divides by the number of elements it can comes out any any number okay so uh, we need to um, to round it right so it asks uh, rounded average yes actually forgot that I forgot the round in the solution so I need to search the function okay so what can I do again uh, I will not be always here on, on the MDN you know searching things but uh, uh, of course uh, uh, no where do you start searching um, round math round okay it gives gives me an hint. Okay, math round. Uh, well, I should uh, read the manual page, manual page, and so on. But you know, this is very simple actually. So, uh, math dot round. Okay. Save, test it. Always test. Okay, fifteen. That's fine. Okay, and then. Let's modify the array again. So, how can we add an array to um, in place? I mean, elements in place. Well, actually, if you want to work in place for the arrays, I mean, there's no other way to use uh, library functions. Okay? Uh, especially if you want to add elements. I mean, modifying elements is simple because uh, you just assign values okay but if you want to add or remove uh, elements you need to use uh, library functions for entering the arrays in place okay so we could uh, push pop uh, shift and shift uh, these kind of things uh, but let's try to limit the, the amount of code that we write okay javascript is uh, uh, th there are plenty of library functions in JavaScript, so let's try to use them uh, as much as possible, okay? Uh, splice, again, okay? Uh, it's really nice because uh, it, it does a lot of things. We can say remove nothing but add <laughs> something, okay? Because these elements are actually added, okay? Uh, they're not just added where you remove elements. They're just added after the removal process. So basically, the displays can both remove and add stuff. Okay. So let's see how how we can use it. So v2 splice, and uh, so here uh, we uh, we need to add elements in the end. Okay. So where do we start at the end? So v2 length length um, how many elements do we delete zero what we add actually we need a set of uh, um, elements to add okay 
So the difficult part comes here. What, what we are writing here. We need to put uh, a variable number of parameters that depends on how many elements we have removed. So NN plus 2, okay, which are the, the same elements. Okay, so we should create a new array of NN plus 2 elements and then in some ways pass it to this function. Okay, so how can we create a new array? Well, of course, there's this uh, nice uh, way of uh, creating the array, but it doesn't work for us because we cannot say the number here, okay? The number of elements. Um, so, of course, we could create an empty array and then push, 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 and add with the four elements to this array. That's an option, okay? Is there anything more, uh, let's say, more convenient? Uh, luckily, yes. So, array fill. I understand you, you don't know the fill method before I, I tell you, but maybe you can try to search a little bit, okay? Here, like uh, maybe fill, okay? Like uh, find last five, flat map and things like that might work for our case, okay? Uh, well, map is another stuff, but uh, I mean, fill, there is something that uh, looks reasonable, right? So fill changes all the elements within a range of of indexes in array to a static value okay it returns to, to it returns uh, a modified array okay so this is more or less what we are searching but not actually what we are searching because once we have an array of nn plus two elements we can fill it with the, the same value okay so without doing a four okay but we still need to create the array so we need to find another idea to create an array okay so let's say if creating an array takes some parameter. Well, actually, we are lucky. <laughs> okay. So actually, we can pass a length to the array and it creates an array. Okay. Of a certain length. Okay. We can also specify the elements. But unfortunately, we, can, we need to specify each element. So the fill method comes handy here. Okay, so let's say, let's have a look at some, some example. So new array 2, okay, so that's an empty array with two elements, okay. Uh, what's, what's inside the array if we don't pass anything? You remember undefined, okay. That's what JavaScript puts in the un uninitialized uh, variables, right and also elements of the array. So uh, let's try to put these things together. That's a, probably the most difficult part if you were doing this alone, but that's why we are doing it together. And then plus two, okay? Um, and then fill with the value and we say the value is average, okay? Uh, so const, uh, say const, uh, const added array equal, okay. Uh, let's see if this works before using it to, into splice, which is more complicated. Added array, okay. Let's print it. And of course we need to comment here because this is not correct code. Well, it creates uh, an array with uh, five elements. All five elements are 15. Okay, that's fine. So, okay, lucky. Okay, what do we, we write here? Uh, we were saying we are expecting items, but single items. So we should put five parameters. But just because nn plus 2 is 5, if it was 6, we should put 6 parameters and so on. You remember yesterday we were talking about this um, a spread operator that comes really, really handy in certain situations like this. Okay? Because you can pass a variable number of parameters and let JavaScript do everything for you. Okay? So if you spread this added array here, basically this added array, which is a a reference at the moment to an array becomes a spread 
as variable number of parameters passed to this function. Okay, so it's here really is really really convenient. Okay, to to pass this uh, um, um, the, the the spread array to the function splice. That's because we we cannot really pass a, a single array to splice. Splice expects a variable number of parameters. Each one is the value of an element to be added to the array. Okay. We cannot change the definition of splice. That's in the standard library. It's, um, it's created like this. Uh, and if there's no, mm, no other function that takes a, a, actually an array and not a, a variable number of parameters, we need to find a way to convert <laughs> one thing to the other. Okay. Okay. So let's test the program. Yes, uh, I didn't print. No, actually, V2 splice, but splice, V2 uh, um, length, uh, yes, should work. V2 length, uh, yeah, that's too many console logs now. Um, that's the added array, so the V2 has been modified, so this, that's this one, okay? So there's 10, 16, 18, because we removed the negative ones, other two ones, we left the rest and we added n n plus two elements. So with the value 15. Okay. So in the end, I say we could comment uh, all the rest and see the result. Okay. Just to not to be confused uh, as I was at a certain point. Okay, so that's the resulting vector. Okay, print both arrays, comparing the scores, uh, etc. That's what we did. Okay, basically, we can remove some console logs, uh, etc. But uh, I mean, um, not really important. So we we wrote, uh, let's say, uh, first, uh, let's say, non-trivial um, program handling arrays. And we also took the chance to see how we should program in a more uh, JavaScript-like way, okay? Uh, using possibly the functions uh, that are uh, given to us by the um, JavaScript standard library, okay? Um, so, yeah, uh, that's the first exercise. Um, well, which, which took a bit longer than expected. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's um, at least start a second. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a question. Yes. The meaning here yes. is taking, taking uh, the meaning of the spread is taking the reference to the array, which actually is just a number, okay? And uh, transforming it in a set of values, okay, that can be taken as single parameters from a function, okay. Now, in the one, in the following one hour and a half, we will see how this uh, spread uh, parameter works uh, with uh, function parameters as well, okay. But the basic idea is that I separate the the single block that is the array in single elements okay that are then um, passed as single parameters to the function okay that's the way it is used here okay okay good uh, well just let me start uh, a second file and then we will break for your lunch actually I'm, I'm staying here i'm not eating until the end uh strings okay so this is this uh, second exercise that talk about strings uh, develop a small javascript program to manage the list of users uh, well again in our website that will carry on uh, uh, during next uh, lectures uh we'll develop in the next lectures define the name of the user comma separated list uh, 
uh, so as a single string and then work on this string uh, with the methods and so on okay um, so I would say I will prepare this uh, I mean the basic uh, the basic uh, content of this file uh, uh, during the break so we we'll save a bit of time okay and in the meanwhile I will commit this stuff on github so you will find everything um, during the break in the in the website the course website so the course website okay as this no that's it uh, the course website has the link to the lecture examples okay for the moment it's just a text but uh, in a couple of minutes there will be the example that I I've developed here okay so I would say let's break 10 10 minutes try not to be too late I know you cannot really uh, have lunch in 10 minutes but if, if I say 20 minutes we will spend half an hour in the break okay so let's let's try to keep the break as short as possible but uh, you know within reasonable limits okay <laughs>